I recently ran a painting challenge based loosely on the concept of game jams. People had one week to paint a model based on a theme, and that theme was something old, something new. I wanted this competition to be not so much based around how good you are at painting, but more around how creative you are with using the prompt to create something interesting. So even if you weren't the most skilled painter, you still had the chance to win the competition by being very creative. There were over a hundred submissions to the paint jam, and all of them were amazing. It was very, very difficult to narrow it down to just my five favourites. So after looking through all the submissions and taking my time, I finally decided my five winners who will win basically nothing apart from recognition and a spot on the Hall of Fame in my Discord. I want to show off my five winners as well as some other submissions which were really, really interesting. The top five are in no particular order and even the ones that are either honourable mention or shown here were contenders into potentially winning. So a very good job to everyone involved. Speaking of people being involved, I also took part in this. Obviously I couldn't win because that would be ridiculous and because I knew what the theme was ahead of time, it meant I had more of an advantage. But what I wanted to do was kind of think of something fairly simple, a bit creative, but not trying too hard because I had a lot more time to think of it. And also, uses an excuse to paint something on my backlog. So this is what I created. This is my Screaming Raven Gravis Captain. It is the newest member of my Crusade Force, and it's a new model, so that's the new part, and it's based on my very first model. I painted this model when I was eight. I've shown it on the channel before. It's horrendous, but I wanted to represent this model in the new model in this Gravis Captain, so it's dark blue. I wanted to keep it darker just so that it fit within the Screaming Ravens. The Aquila and some of the details are white with silver on this belt feed magazine thing. All the weapons are red. He's not a crimson fist, it just happens that the weapon he had was a fist, and it is now crimson, and he's dark blue. But he's not a crimson fist. Silver details on the backpack to represent the fact that the backpack was entirely silver. I made the cloak grey, because you can see on the original model, there's no base coat here, no undercoat at all, and just didn't paint it whatsoever. And finally, when I was doing the base, obviously I got a massive splodge of green on this leg, and so I painted this leg green as well. That fits with the Screaming Raymond theme, and also represents this part of the model. So obviously the old thing is the paint scheme based on my old model, the new thing is the new model. A few people took that similar approach with some entries doing a remaster of some of their old or very first models, either as a replacement model or to replace outdated models or as an homage or recreation. And then Eleanor even went a step further, doing a new scheme on top of the old models. This old metal model has been revamped and painted over into the new scheme. I thought using that model itself as the thing you upgrade is actually a really fun idea, so it deserves an honourable mention, especially as it's a very well done piece. And speaking of old models, they were a popular choice in this challenge, and it was interesting to see some really old models appearing. Some painted after many long years on a backlog, or in the case of Kerpel's Orc model, finally completed after being started 28 years ago. And while these models aren't that old, our first winner has taken an old model and a new model to create a really fun little piece of this squig eating a skink. I am biased towards squigs because I love squigs a lot, but lazy platypua. I think it might be platypus, but misspelled, but... It's a lazy platypus. They've taken a squig from 2019, the new, and a skink from 2002, the old, and combined it together to create this fun little scene, which I really, really like. It's very well painted, some really nice gradients here on the squig. Really fun posing, you really see the anguish in this face. And overall, it's just a really funny scene. I really like it. So congratulations to lazy platypus for the first of our winners. Speaking of the theme of being literally old, diving into the past with old parts and old models played a big part in many entries. Creating new models from parts of old models to create some awesome kit bashes, combining elements from old models and new models. Models, or even in the case of Alpha Legion guy taking just old cardboard scrap and creating a Vindicator. There were several second-hand rescues as well, utilising someone else's old model to create something new. Our second winner, however, put a spin on that, which I really thought was extremely cool and an extra challenge in and of itself. Is a kept. Oh, you guys have horrible names. Isaketh's Chaplain for the Sons of the Ember Vale was the second-hand purchase that was destined to be stripped and restarted, but instead they decided to continue with the model from where it was to create something new. I thought the idea of attempting to use what was already there was such a creative and good challenge to add to the something old, something new prompt. I have to get credit for the effort, so well done, Isaketh. <laughs> You're the second winner. And whilst we're on this topic of trying a fun challenge with the paint jam, Black Mage took a model that had been sitting on a sprue in the pile of shame, so not super old compared to others, but decided to attempt it with a new challenge of only using five colours, plus black and white. I wanted to give this an honourable mention, because whilst other entries utilised the something or something new theme in more memorable and interesting ways, the challenge of using a limited palette is something that I'd encourage others to try. In fact, it's on my list of potential paint jam themes, so maybe Black Mage can just see into the future, or into my Google Docs, or my house. Sometimes instead of the model itself being literally old, there are a lot of awesome entries that utilised old schemes or old parts of the lore, either painting new models in a scheme based on lore such as Horus Heresy era colours of 40k models, recreating custom schemes from past, or basing models off old childhood nostalgia. An honourable mention here goes to Dr. Fun Facts for taking an old 40k second Bad Moons theme and transferring it through the multiverse onto a new 3D printed Goblin Fighter model. I really like this model, it's a fun deviation taking that 40k theme outside of 40k, so very nicely done. Taking that a step further, we have some entries which are one 
one model that is split between the new and the old schemes, attempting to recreate an old scheme on one half of the model and doing a modern scheme on the other half. Raleigh, or Rally. Why do your names are all horrible? Raleigh took this a step further with an early submission to the challenge, doing this half Space Marine in colour and half Space Marine in black and white, like before they invented colour. Which is very funny, and a good take on the old versus new, and deserves an honourable mention. However, our third winner took that one step beyond and created this fantastic model. Omel Cook painted an amazing piece here, with one half representing the drab early 1900s style and the other half cyberpunk-esque future. I'm not entirely sure what the model itself is based on, I think it's based on a Stormcast model, but the split is so nicely done. The vibrancy of this half with this really nice ethereal glimmering prismatic sword on one side with this bright purple wing and then the drab dark wing on the other side. It just looks so, so nice. I'm also personally an absolute sucker for split models like this, having one half be one thing and one half be another. I've done it a couple of times myself, but this is just such a good execution, such a nice idea. One of the biggest surprises that I had for this competition was the absolute speed some people actually managed to get the work done, especially when it came to people making dioramas, entire bloody dioramas. I was already impressed with some of the painting that was being done in an insanely short amount of time. And an honorable mention really has to go to Karkos, who managed to paint this in apparently just under five hours. I know I said I didn't want this to be based on purely painting ability, but my god, this is really good. So I want to give Karkos an honorable mention here for the absolute skill that went into this model. Although I think you're probably meant to put this into Golden Demon, not my silly little paint jam. The dioramas that I mentioned are really impressive, especially with some of the details and theming represented in them. Pugs Not Drugs took an old orc model from their childhood and created this fantastic scene. And what's amazing about it was it was the first time they'd ever painted painted an orc, or done any non-metallic metal, or even done a diorama. A triple threat of new skills and well deserving an honorable mention, and honestly really close to being a winner. It just so happened that the dioramas were very competitive, there were a lot of very good ones. Dreyas Est here took something old, something new even further beyond, by adding in the something borrowed, something blue, which was my original plan for the theme, but it felt too restricted, but nevertheless they managed to do all four parts using the old Cities of Death street lamp parts from 2005, several new techniques, using blue in the boosters and borrowing my model. I really do like this one. I was considering making it a winner, like with Pugs Not Drugs, but I know Dreyss personally and have been umming and ahhing about whether it's right to give him the win. I mean, it's awesomely done and a great model. I do like it, but it is my Hellion. <laughs> Would it be nepotistic of me to give a close friend a win? Then I remembered he added two anti-fly tanks to his crusade force just to fight against my fly-heavy screaming ravens and kick my ass, so fuck him. Out of all the dioramas though, two really stuck out to me, and both of them were because it utilised storytelling. Lore and story were popular ideas utilised by a number of submissions to great effect, with some really cool ideas being painted or modelled on aspects of the lore, or telling a really cool story. As the submissions were being added, it seemed like there were definitely categories of what people were doing, and I wanted to really only do one winner per quote-unquote category, but for Chibata Rotter and Martyrill... Why are your names so horrible? But for Jabata Rotter and Marty Rills. Rills? Marty? Marty? LS? Martil? Martils? Whatever, I'm just going to call you Marty. For these two, I couldn't justify one being a winner or one not, so these are our two final winning entries. And interesting enough, one was right at the start and one was right at the end of the train jam. For Jabata Rotter, what I really liked was the excellent atmosphere. Usually like pieces from their broken bits and paper and foam to create something new with new techniques using some OSL and some streaking grime. But what really takes it over the edge is the story that's told with it. Utilising the theme in both the actual construction and creation of the diorama, as well as the narrative being sold, is such an excellent approach and deserves a winner spot, so well done Chibata Rotter. And with only 11 minutes left before the deadline, Marty submitted one of my favourite ideas of this Chaos Space Marine looking into a mirror at his pre-heresy self. Such an amazing concept that I had to make the final winner. People had done pre and post heresy splits or using old heresy schemes on new models, but no one had taken that concept to this level. And a really nice detail here that Marty pointed out was the fact that the plasma pistol is still the same. Still the old trusty plasma pistol, but everything else is different. It tells such a good story, a really nice narrative in a succinct and simple way. It doesn't need a story to go along with it, and that's not a slight against Shabata Rotter, that's just the way this piece is set up. You don't need to write what is happening, you can see it. Well executed, amazing creativity for the prompt, definitely deserves that last winner spot, so congratulations. There were so many other great submissions, and my only regret is that I can only pick a top five, because like I said, narrowing this down to five was very, very tricky. There were a lot of fun, unique interpretations I wanted to include, but if I did that, are basically including every single submission, and I have to cut it off at some point. If you want to see all the submissions, they'll still be available on my Discord, so go through them, have a look, check out all the amazing work that the community has done. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you enjoyed some of the really good work that people have done. If you've participated, I hope you had a great time with the Paint Jam. I had a great time with it, and on a personal note, I really enjoyed seeing people saying that this was helping them get motivated, or getting people back in the hobby, or getting new people into the hobby. I really like these kind of challenges, because they get people involved, they helped me with painting something, and I hope they helped you as well, so I'm definitely do this again 
maybe in a few months time. Let me know in the comments if you've got any ideas for paint jams, but hope you enjoyed this. All the submissions, like I said, will be available if you're on Discord and the top five will enter the paint jam hall of fame for all to see, even though you could probably still see them in the submissions tab, but there'll be a special place in them because they're special. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, all the good YouTube stuff, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.